Super Mario Odyssey, inline. SMOO is an unofficial multiplayer mod for Super Mario Odyssey in the Nintendo Switch. Features, explore kingdoms together with up to 10 people. Almost every capture in the game is synced between players. Full to be in costume models syncing. New and collection is shared between all players. Custom configuration menu. Support for custom game modes, work in progress. Available game modes, hide and seek. Playing the SMMO mod. Requirements, hacked Nintendo Switch. Super Mario Odyssey version 1.0.0. Internet connection. Common hide and seek rules. A kingdom that hasn't been played in is chosen randomly for a new round. Some of the players that haven't started a round as a seeker before are chosen randomly to be seekers for this round. For fairness reasons the amount of seekers should be the same in all rounds or might be adjusted to the size of the kingdom. The seekers go into the Odyssey and start to count down for 60 or more seconds. The hiders run away and look for a place to hide in. After the time is up, the hiders switch to hider mode which will impose their timer and the seekers start seeking them. Hiders can move around at any time, whenever they want an air and be limited to the first minute. Only seekers are allowed to use the checkpoints to warp around. If a seeker touches a hider, the hider dies. When a hider dies their timer pauses and they become seekers. Dying within the first few minutes of the round is forgivable, unless, while being chased by a seeker. Once everyone has become a seeker, the round is over. When everyone has started a round as a seeker, the game is over and the player with the highest time wins. After some time in a round, usually every two minutes, hiders are obligated to give the seekers a hint where they are. Seekers choose what kind of hint to provide. Starting with more general hints, and as the round goes on more specific hints. The hint has to be a truthful statement at the moment given. Even if a second later it isn't true anymore. Common hints are, being in a sub-area or in the overworld. Top or bottom half of the in-game map. Left or right half of the in-game map. Cell coordinates of the in-game map for example C2. Drawing a picture that hints to where they are. Sending a cutout on a screenshot. Places that are forbidden to hide in other kingdoms. Inside the Odyssey. Inside captures, using static captures like power lines temporarily to move somewhere is fine. Inside something without collision that occludes the player completely, for example trees. At a position where an object was located at before interacting with it, for example crates or chests. In areas inaccessible by others, for example rooms only accessible by wearing specific costumes. In special areas, for example the boss fight paintings in Mushroom Kingdom or race events like Koopa Free Running. Out of Bounds. Kingdom specific rules, Deep Woods is not considered to be a part of Wooded Kingdom. Accidentally falling into it counts as dying. It might be used as its own kingdom to play around in. In Snow Kingdom the hint for sub-area or not is extended by a third option, Shigeria. This option aggregates all sub-areas that are accessible after falling down the hole. Play on a hacked Nintendo Switch console. Hack the Nintendo Switch. In order to install any custom software in the Nintendo Switch, it first needs to be hacked. If you have already done this in the past, make sure to check out the instructions anyway, so you don't miss out on anything important. Downgrade Super Mario Odyssey to 1.0.0 The multiplayer mod does not work with SMO version 1.3.0, but requires version 1.0.0. If you have that version installed already you're done with this step. But even if you are on version 1.0.0 it's advisable to upgrade to version 1.3.0 anyway and downgrade the game in the following way. Because then the operation system of the Nintendo Switch won't complain on every software start that there is a new game update available that you should install. To conveniently downgrade, 
There is the Odyssey downgrade tool made by Shad W, unlike other tools, like Tinfoil, Goldleaf, DBI, that mess around with software installations which might get you a console ban. It makes a dump of the base game and applies it as a mod to the game. That way the installed game will stay on version 1.3.0, but it will launch as 1.0.0. Warning, using XSAT instead of SAT32 for the SD card will likely result in a corrupted downgrade that will crash the game or console. A prerequisite for the downgrader is that you already backed up the console keys with lockpick underscore RCM, which you should have already done when hacking the console for safety reasons. Go to the releases page and download the latest Odyssey underscore downgrade point mro file. Put the file onto your SD card into the slash switch slash directory. Launch the homebrew menu by opening the album. Select the Odyssey Downgrade app from the list and launch it by pressing A. In the simple menu that opens, choose Add Downgrade and press A. This will dump the game which takes about 2 to 3 minutes and requires about 5.2 GB of space in the SD card. Once that is done press B to get back to the menu. Choose Add Patch and press A. The second step only takes a brief moment after which you can exit the Odyssey Downgrade app by pressing B twice. If you're using a cartridge, then you'll need to remove and reinsert the cartridge now, before you can start the game. Now go check that the game is on version 1.0.0. If you ever want to remove the downgrade, simply launch the Odyssey Downgrade app again and choose Remove Downgrade and Remove Patch to get back to version 1.3.0. Install the Super Mario Odyssey Online mod. Step 1. Download the latest dev build of the mod whose file name ends with underscore, for underscore switch point zip. The last asset in the list is the newest. Step 2. Extract the downloaded point zip file to receive an atmosphere folder which you need to copy to the root directory of the SD card. Please notice that there should already be an atmosphere folder on the SD card. The folder from the mod does not replace the existing directory, but is meant to be merged with it. Existing directories and files should be overridden. If you ever want to uninstall the mod, why, look at the file structure from the point .zip file and remove all the files manually. At the time of writing, the following folders and file can be deleted slash atmosphere slash contents slash zero one zero 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 one zero 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 slash exists slash slash atmosphere slash contents slash zero one zero 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 one zero 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 slash rumps slash slash atmosphere slash exifs underscore patches slash starlight base slash 3 c 8 12 graph 9 c 82 da 0 6 4 d 6098 d f 79 ga 1 point ips test that it works. When starting the game with the mod for the first time a keyboard dialog should pop up. Before the main menu asking for a server IP choose one of the public servers and type in its IPv4 address. The host entry in the server list is a convenient alternative to entering the IPv4 address. But it is currently only possible with the dev build of the mod. Entering host names doesn't work with the usual emulator. In your versions of the mod the game will also ask for the port. If it can't connect to the server it'll briefly show the text failed to connect, before it continues to the main menu. Verify that the server is online and that your device is connected to the internet. Try out other public servers to rule out a temporary problem with a specific server by changing the server. When there is no immediate error, then start a new game or resume an existing save. Check out the in-game debug menu for the client socket connection status, socket connected at the top of the menu. If you are not connected it should read client socket connection status, socket unavailable instead. Note that the connection status, inline or connection status, 
Offline further down in the menu is not your own connection status, but the status of the selected pulpit slot for other players. If there are other players connected to the server, the total connected players counts should be above one and they should appear in the player list. FAQ, something doesn't work, where do I get help? Play with the Ryojinx emulator. Introduction. This guide assumes that you have already hacked your Nintendo Switch and have properly installed and set up the latest Ryojinx version. If you haven't, then please consult the Ryojinx setup and configuration guide first. The currently latest release build v1.0.0 of the mod doesn't work well with emulators. Use the latest dev build instead. The multiplayer mod does not work with SMO version 1.3.0 but requires version 1.0.0. FAQ How do I obtain SMO ROM for emulators? Configure Ryojinx. Open the options, settings in Ryojinx, go to the system tab and check enable guest internet access to allow outgoing connections to the internet by the emulator. Ryojinx's default user profile should not be used with SMO because the server uses the profile ID to differentiate between players. The ID of the default profile is always 0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
This guide assumes that you have already hacked your Nintendo Switch and have properly installed and set up the latest user version. You should be at version 1114 or later. The version is shown in the title of the window. If you haven't, then please consult the user quickster guide first. The currently latest release build v1.0.0 of the mod doesn't work well with emulators. Use the latest dev build instead. The multiplayer mod does not work with SMO version 1.3.0 but requires version 1.0.0. FAQ How do I obtain SMO ROM for emulators? Configure Yuzu. Open the emulation, configure, dialog in Yuzu. In the left side select the system settings and change over to the network tab. By default the network interface none is selected, which means that the emulator has no internet access. You instead need to select the network interface of your system that offers internet access. In Windows it might be named Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi network, wireless network connection, wireless connection, local area connection, or something like that. In U slash Linux you might encounter ETH 0 WLN 0 ENS 6 WLS 7 or something similar. Optional, while you are still in the system settings, head over to the profiles tab to create a new user with a name you like. The name of the profile will be shown to other players. Once the profile is created, simply click in it once to select it as the current user. Otherwise you're displayed with the name Yuzu. Warning, if you share your Yuzu directory with others, then the previous step is not optional for the other players. Every player connected to the same server needs a unique profile ID. Renaming the existing profile is not enough, because the profile ID needs to be different. Yuzu automatically generates a random profile ID in the first start. But by sharing the whole directory with others, the already generated profile ID is copied to Install the Super Mario Odyssey Online mod. Step 1. Download the latest dev build of the mod whose file name ends with underscore, for underscore yuzu point zip. The last asset in the list is the newest. Step 2. In Yuzu right click in Super Mario Odyssey and choose Open Mod Data Location to open the mod directory. In Windows it should be located at percent at data percent backslash user backslash load backslash zero one zero 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 one zero 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 zero. Step three extract the SMO folder from the point zip file that you downloaded in step one into the mod directory that was opened at step two. Test that it works. When starting the game with the mod for the first time a keyboard dialog should pop up. Before the main menu asking for a server IP choose one of the public servers and type in its IPv4 address. The host entry in the server list is a convenient alternative to entering the IPv4 address. But it is currently only possible with the dev build of the mod. Entering host names doesn't work with the user emulator. In your versions of the mod the game will also ask for the port. If it can't connect to the server it'll briefly show the text failed to connect, before it continues to the main menu. Verify that the server is online and that your device is connected to the internet. Try out other public servers to rule out a temporary problem with a specific server by changing the server. When there is no immediate error, then start a new game or resume an existing save. Check out the in-game debug menu for the client socket connection status, socket connected at the top of the menu. If you are not connected it should read client socket connection status, socket unavailable instead. Note that the connection status, inline or connection status, offline further down in the menu is not your own connection status but the status of the selected pulpit slot for other players. If there are other players connected to the server, the total connected players counts should be above one and they should appear in the player list. FAQ, something doesn't work, where do I get help? Build the mod from sources. You usually shouldn't need to do that, unless you want to take part in developing the mod. 
The GitHub project on the mod should offer automatic builds for the latest development versions. Building it natively requires you to install development software in your computer. Check out the mod's readme for details. An easier alternative is to use Docker. That way the only required software you need to install on your system is Docker. All other dependencies will not be installed in your system directly but are only downloaded and used sandboxed. The mod comes with a docker-build.sh script to easily trigger building the mod point slash docker-build.sh. The builded mod artifacts should be in the starlight underscore patch underscore 100 directory afterwards. When building for emulators you'll need to tell it that it's for emulators by setting the environment variable ISEMU equals 1. With the docker script just call it with an additional parameter instead point slash docker dash build dot sh1. When switching between emulator and switch builds, you should delete the temporary build 100 directory in between. An emulator build, for you you will require the build artifacts to be moved around a bit. Hosting on SMOO server. Requirements, public IPv4 address. Open port. Computer. Using binary files to run the server. You will find binary files of recent server versions attached on its releases page. Server is for new slash Linux x64. Server.arm is for new slash Linux arm. Server.arm64 is for new slash Linux arm64. Server.x is for Windows. Just execute them preferable in a CLI and you rerunning the server. In new slash Linux you might need to install additional runtime dependencies to Debian slash Ubuntu, libicu 67 If you don't trust those binaries or want to build a server version with your own changes, you can build the binary files from the source code, get clone https colon slash slash jithub.com slash sani6 slash online server. CD online server. .net publish point slash server slash server point cs proj minus c release. Building it requires the point net 6.0 SDK. The builded binary files for your system will be located at point slash server slash bin slash release slash net 6.0 slash. You can change this path by using the minus o parameter. To run your own builds you also need the point .NET runtime installed. Alternatively you can build with minus minus self minus contained which allows you to run the binary in systems without the point .NET runtime. But that requires you to specify the runtime for which to build for for example minus R Linux minus x64 minus R Linux minus ARM. Minus R Linux minus ARM64 or minus R Win minus X64. If you read providing the runtime anyway, consider also using minus P colon publish single file true to bundle everything into one single binary file. Using pre build Docker images with Docker Compose to run the server. The server project provides ready to use Docker images for different architectures, MD64, ARM and ARM64. They can be used in a lot of different scenarios together with different cloud or hosting providers. But you can also run them on your system in which you already installed Docker. One benefit of this is that you don't have to deal with installing any microshit dependencies in your system or need to build the project in your own. The server is also running isolated in its own container separated from the rest of the system. Because plain docker commands become quite a hassle to use, one recommendation would be to use docker compose to have all options inside a docker composeyml file. When the file is present you can start the server by calling docker compose up minus d in the same directory. This will download and start the server in the background listening on port 1027, external, internal and create the settings point JSON file in the data subdirectory. You'll also need to run this after making any changes to the docker-compose.yml. 
The first time executing this will download the currently latest server version automatically. But once it downloaded it, it will stick to the version. If you want to update in the future you should call docker compose pulling and docker compose up minus d to update to newer versions. Alternatively in the docker dash compose module after the image name, you can specify what version exactly you want to run. For example, image colon ghcr.io slash sani6 slash sml minus online minus server colon 1.0.2. Check out the GitHub repository for all available Docker tags. If you don't want to use a pre built image but rather want to build the Docker image yourself, for example with your own fixes to the source code, you can comment out the image line and comment in the build line in the docker dash composed module. The build value needs to point to the server code directory that contains the docker file. To rebuild after changes you'll need to execute docker compose build and, and docker compose up minus d. The restart, unless stopped in the docker dash composed module will automatically restart the server if it crashes or starts it again after a system reboot. To really stop the server you'll need to call docker compose stop. To attach to the server in the command line interface, to send commands to it, use docker attach back quote docker compose ps minus q back quote minus minus sig minus proxy equals false. If you only want to look at the server logs without giving it any commands you can use docker compose logs minus minus tail equals 20 minus minus follow. For additional security in new slash Linux it's advised to define which user should run the server, default, root. Comment in the user line in the docker dash compose document provide the user ID and group ID to use execute echo dollar sign left parenthesis ID minus u right parenthesis colon dollar sign left parenthesis ID minus g right parenthesis to get your own IDs. You'll also need to modify the permissions of the data subdirectory so that the user can write to it, ch on 1000 colon 1000 minus r point slash data slash. Configuring the server with the settings point JSON file. The settings point JSON file is automatically created when the server starts. At the right or above you can see the default values for server version 1.0.3. Server, address, the network interface the server listens on, for incoming connections. Leave it at 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 to accept incoming connections from all networks. There are very few and rare use cases, where you'd ever want to change this value. One possible example, you're connected to your home network and a VPN, and therefore have two network interfaces. But you don't want other VPN clients to access the server. Then you could enter the IPv4 address your server has on the home network to only listen to that interface. Port to TCP port clients used to connect to the server. You need to change this for example, if you're running multiple servers in the same computer or want to avoid firewalls blocking this port. When using Docker you should not edit the port here but inside the docker dash compose module. Max players, maximum amount of players that can be connected to the server at the same time. A value higher than 6 might currently cause laggy or crashing in Wooded Kingdom. Flip, visually flips the 3D and 2D models of players in their head. Enabled, true or false. Players, an array of unique profile IDs, not their names of players which are on the flip list and therefore affected by this setting. POE affects who sees whom has flipped. Possible values self affected players will see and affected players has flipped. Others affected players will be seen has flipped by everyone or both affected players will see everyone has flipped and everyone sees them has flipped. Note you'll never see yourself has flipped. Scenario Merge enabled, true or false. When the players are in different stages of the story, scenarios, they are technically in different levels and don't see each other. This option tries to merge them virtually all together, so they can see each other without being in the same level. Panlist, 
enabled, true or false. Players, an array of unique profile IDs, not their names that are prevented from joining the server. For example, you could enter 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 minus 0 0 0 0 0 minus 0 0 0 0 minus 0 0 0 0 minus 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 to prevent Rio Jinx players to connect that haven't changed their default profile yet. IP addresses. An array of IPv4 addresses that are prevented from joining the server. Discord, token, secret credential string with that the server can log into as the Discord bot. Prefix, messages that start with this prefix string are interpreted by the bot as commands to it. Command channel, this setting was added with server version 1.0.3. You can enter the unique ID of the Discord channel, between double quotes, the bots should receive commands from, but not send log messages to. Log channel, you can enter the unique ID of the Discord channel, between double quotes, the bots should write log messages to and receive commands from. Shines, this setting was added with server version 1.0.3. Enabled, true or false can be used to disable modem synchronization between players. Disabling it might not work correctly with server version 1.0.3. It prevents the server from saving them, but the collected moons are still sent to all connected players. This should be fixed with later versions. Persist shines, these settings were added with server version 1.0.2. An option to save shines, moons, collected into a file, to survive server restarts and crashes. Enabled, true or false. File name, in which file to save the shines into. Commands to control or interact with the running server. When running the server with the binary, attaching to the Docker container, or using the Discord integration, you can send it commands to control and interact with it. Following are all the commands that the server version 1.0.3 understands. Help. Outputs a list of all possible commands. List. Outputs the player names and profile IDs of all currently connected players. Load settings. Reloads the modified settings point JSON in without restarting the server. Max players player count. Sets the amount of players that can be connected to the server at the same time. Scenario true or false. Enables or disables the scenario merging. See the settings section for details. Send all stage. Shortcut that will send all connected players to the given stage. This is identical to send stage double quote double quote minus one asterisk stage. Show alias values. Show known values. Send stage warp ID scenario player. Sends individual player or players to a specific stage. Stage, show alias values, show known values. Warp ID, change stage ID for the warp. To specify exactly where to spawn inside the stage. Use double quote double quote for the default spawn point, the odyssey. Scenario, show known values. What scenario to send the players to? Has to be an integer between minus 1 and 127. Use minus 1 to keep the scenario unchanged. Player, a list of players to send, separated by spaces. Can be their player name or their profile ID. Asterisk is also a valid value to send all connected players. Rejoin player name. Closes the connection to the client of the player or players. The client will automatically reconnect again. Player name. A list of player names to rejoin, separated by spaces. Asterisk is also a valid value for all connected players. If you start the list with exclamation mark asterisk, it will rejoin all but the following players. Crash player name. Send the player or players to an invalid stage that will crash the game, and then closes the connection to the client of the player or players. Player name. A list of player names to crash, separated by spaces. Asterisk is also a valid value for all connected players. If you start the list with exclamation mark asterisk, it will crash all but the following players. 
Then player name. Sends the player or players to an invalid stage that will crash the game. Adds their profile IDs and IPv4 addresses to the ban list. See settings. And then closes the connection to the client of the player or players. Player name. A list of player names to ban, separated by spaces. Asterisk is also a valid value for all connected players. If you start the list with exclamation mark asterisk, it will ban all but the following players. Tag. Hide and seek helper functions. Tag time player name minutes seconds. Manually sets the hide and seek timer for a player. Player name. One specific player name or asterisk for all connected players. Minutes. Value between 0 and 65,535. Seconds, value between 0 and 59. Tag seeking player name true or false. Manually sets the hide and seek status for a player to seeker, true, or hider, false. Player name, one specific player name or asterisk for all connected players. Tag start seconds player name. Starts a countdown that will set the hide and seek status of all connected players when the time is over. Seconds, value between 0 and 255. Player name, a list of player names that will be seekers. Everyone else will become hiders. Flip. Commands to control the flip feature. See settings. Flip list. Lists all profile IDs that are on the flip list. Flip set true or false. Enables or disables the flip feature. Flip POE, both, self or others. Sets the setting for who sees whom, as flipped. Flip add profile ID. Adds a player to the flip list. Profile ID, the unique profile ID of the player, not its name, that should be added to the flip list. Flip remove profile ID. Removes a player from the flip list. Profile ID, the unique profile ID of the player, not its name, that should be added to the flip list. Shine. Commands to manipulate shines, moons. Shine list. Lists all shine IDs that have been collected globally by all players. Shine clear. Removes all saved shines on the server. This will not remove shines in game from connected players. Shine sync. Manually syncs all saved shines to all connected players. Only those shines that are missing for the player from the point of view of the server are transferred. This will not remove shines in game from connected players. This should normally happen automatically when entering the game, when there's a change to the shines and every two minutes. Shine sends shine ID player name. Manually sends one shine to players. Shine ID, the unique ID for an individual shine, moon, in the game. Show known values. Player name. A list of player names that shall receive the shine, separated by spaces. Asterisk is also a valid value for all connected players. DSC restart. Restarts the Discord bot, restart server. Stops the server and restarts it again in a new process. This doesn't work well with Docker, because when its main process stops, the whole Docker container will be stopped. Exit, quit, or Q stops the server. Setting up a Discord bot. The aim of this is that the SMOO server connects to your private Discord server as a bot. It can then send logs to a dedicated logs channel and receive commands from you or someone else. This might be way easier to use in remote scenarios than to SSH to the server and attach the CLI to the server process. Create an application. Go to discord.com slash developers slash applications. Create a new application and give it a name, for example SMOO server. Create a bot, navigate to the bot section of the new application in AdBot, change its username to one you like and maybe add a nice avatar, you'll see this in Discord. Uncheck the public bot setting that is enabled by default. Also make sure that message content intent is enabled, if you want to send commands to the bot. Generate a bot token. More importantly is that we call reset token for the bot. This will generate a new secret token that we need to connect the bot to our SMOO server. 
Copy the displayed token and paste it into the settings point JSON of the server. It goes to Discord. Token and needs to be surrounded by double quotes. The token is only displayed once. If you forgot to copy it or lose it later, you can always get back here and use reset token to generate a new token. The old one will become invalid by doing this. Add the application to a server. Navigate to the OF2 URL generator section of the application and select the box scope and nothing else. At the bottom there will now be a generated URL. Copy the generated URL and paste it into your address bar. In the open site you need to authorize your Discord application to access your Discord account. To do so you will have to, to select a Discord server that it shall be granted access to. To confirm the authorization click on Authorize. Only servers that you have the managed server permission for are shown. You should select your own private Discord server for this, that only you have access to, otherwise others can send commands to the SMOO server. If you don't have one yet, just create one, it is free, simply click in the green plus button at the end of your server list. Create an admin channel. Create a new channel in the Discord server, where the bot shall write its log messages to and receive commands from. We'll need to give the channel ID to the SMOO server to link them, but channel IDs normally aren't shown anywhere within Discord. To achieve this, the developer mode needs to be enabled first in the Discord app settings, under user settings, app settings, advanced. Once that is enabled, we can right click in the channel and choose copy ID. Create a moderator channel, optional. Create a new channel in the Discord server, where the bots shall receive commands from. As with the admin channel we need to give the channel ID to the SMOO server to link them. Channel permissions. The bot requires the following permissions for the channel or channels. General permissions, view channel. Text permissions, send messages. Text permissions, read message history, to receive commands. Configure the server. Now that we have set everything else up and have the bot token and the channel IDs we need to enter them into the settings point JSON. After changing the settings point JSON we either need to restart the SMOO server or send it to load settings command. The admin channel ID goes into the log channel setting and the moderator channel ID into the command channel setting. The difference between both channels is that the command channel won't receive the server log. But both channels can send commands to the server. If everything is set up correctly, the Discord bot should now be shown as online in the Discord server. You can send the bot commands via direct messages or write them into channels the bot can read. The commands need to start with the prefix that is configured in the settings point JSON. For example list becomes dollar sign list with the default dollar sign prefix. Hosting behind a router. The router in your network is the device that manages your connection to the internet. Among other things, your router acts as a security barrier to prevent evil actors in the internet to access your devices directly. Because of that, when someone in the internet, or you yourself, tries to connect to your SMOO server using your public IPv4 address, your router will block that connection attempt. Port forwarding. In order to allow the connections, you'll need to tell your router via port forwarding to route all incoming connections for SMOO to your computer running the server software. Warning, open ports on the internet can be dangerous. Bots constantly scan for open ports and automatically probe them for non exploit vectors. Bugs in the server software or sloppy programming of it could, in theory, be used by hackers to gain access to your computer. For that reason, when the SMOO server is exposed to the public internet, you should not run it directly in your computer. Instead, it's advised to use some form of sandboxing slash isolation to run it, for example with Docker and using an unprivileged user account. Note, you yourself should use the private or local IPv4 address of your computer to connect to your own server. Using your own public IPv4 address to connect adds a necessary lag and might be affected by other restrictions. Firewall settings. 
besides port forwarding, the firewall of your computer, or of the router, could also be a cause that prevents connections from reaching your server. Be sure to accept inbound TCP traffic from all source slash remote ports for the specific target slash local port 1027. In Windows when starting a server application for the first time, the Windows firewall will inform you that it has blocked some features for the program and asks if access should be allowed. Make sure that you allow it to communicate with private and public networks, otherwise you'll need to allow it manually in the advanced firewall settings of the system or via the command line. Manually adding a firewall rule to accept SMO connections using the command line, in Windows, add permanent rule, net sh, a dv firewall, firewall, add rule, here equals in, action equals allow, protocol equals tcp, local port equals 1027, edge equals yes, name equals double quote smo double quote, remove permanent rule, net sh, a dv firewall, firewall, delete rule, name equals double quote smo double quote, mu slash linux, add temporary rule with ip tables, gone after restart, pseudo ip tables, minus i input, minus p t c p minus minus t port 1027, minus j accept, minus m comment, minus minus comment double quote smo double quote, Add permanent rule with UFW, pseudo UFW, allow in, from 0 top 0 top 0 top 0 slash 0 to any, port 1027, proto TCP comment double quote SMO double quote. Remove permanent rule with UFW, pseudo UFW, delete, allow in, from 0 top 0 top 0 top 0 slash 0 to any. Port 1027, Proto TCP, comment double quote SMO double quote. Test ports remotely. To test, if the port is forwarded correctly, is not blocked by a firewall, and reach the running server software, you should use a remote port check service to test that it is open. You get signal.com, port checker.co, just change the port number to 1027 and click in check on one of the websites. It tells you then, if the port is open or not and the test itself should trigger log messages in the server output. An open port means that everything works as it should be. If someone is then not able to connect to your server using your public IPv4 address that most likely implies a problem in their end. Common causes, using the reconnect feature, entering the wrong IPv4 address or port, or not having configured the emulator correctly. A closed port on the other hand is a strong indicator that the server isn't reachable from the internet. Double check all port forwarding and firewall settings and that you have your own public IPv4 address that isn't shared with other customers of your ISP. Hosting with a virtual private network. If you aren't able to port forward, don't want to port forward for security reasons, don't want to share your public IPv4 address for privacy reasons, or remote hosting is not an option, then using a virtual private network VPN service might be your best alternative. Common VPN network providers, not to be confused with commercial VPN tunnel slash proxy providers, zero tier. Are admin VPN. Hamachi. When using these services you install their, usually proprietary, software on your computer. Inside of the software you can create and or join a private group slash team slash network that connects your computer to a VPN with the other members. Every computer connected to that network will have an additional VPN IP address with which the others can communicate with them. Warning, only join a VPN with people you trust. Joining the same network gives other members a more direct access to your computer than with using port forwarding behind a router. What normally is only limited to a single port that you select and allow individually, is now full network access to your whole computer with all of its services. For your own security, 
Make sure that you update your system regularly, disable services that they should have no access to, and do not under any circumstance disable your firewall while connected to a VPN with strangers. For SMO, one of the computers in that VPN will need to run the server software. The person running it should use the private or local IPv4 address of their computer to connect to their own server as usual. The other computers connected to the VPN will be able to connect to the server using the private VPN IPv4 address of the computer running the server. When playing with Yuzu, then the VPN network adapter needs to be selected in the Yuzu settings. Remember to change this back before trying to connect to non-VPN servers again. Playing with a Nintendo Switch. The problem is that this out-of-the-box only works with emulators, because there is no VPN client that runs on a Nintendo Switch. For that reason, if only one person wants to play with a Switch, they should be the one running the server, so that they connect to their own server using the private IPv4 address of their computer within their home network. But if multiple persons from different locations want to play with a Switch, that approach doesn't work anymore. In that case additional Switch players that aren't hosting the server need to configure port forwarding on their computers, not on routers that are connected to the VPN. That way the switch will not connect to the server directly but to the private IPv4 address within the home network of the computer connected to the VPN, which will then port forward the connection to the server over the VPN. Manually port forward using the command line replace dollar sign left curly bracket server underscore VPN underscore IP right curly bracket with the private VPN IPv4 address of the computer hosting the server in Windows add permanent rule also needs a firewall rule for port 1027 net sh interface port proxy add v4 to v4 Listen address equals zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. Listen port equals one thousand twenty seven. Connect address equals dollar sign left curly bracket server underscore VPN underscore IP right curly bracket. Connect port equals one thousand twenty seven. Remove permanent rule. Net SH interface port proxy. Delete V4 to V4. Listen address equals zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. Listen port equals one thousand twenty seven. In new slash Linux, run a program to port forward. Also needs a firewall rule for port one thousand twenty seven. So cat t c b four minus listen colon one thousand twenty seven comma fork t c b four colon dollar sign left curly bracket server underscore b p n underscore i p right curly bracket colon one thousand twenty seven. Had temporary rules with IP tables, gone after restart, echo 1, vertical bracket, pseudo t, slash, proc, slash, size, slash, net, slash, IPv4, slash, IP underscore forward. Pseudo IP tables, minus IP routing, minus t net, minus p, t, c, p, minus, minus, d port 1027, minus jd net. Minus minus to minus destination dollar sign left curly bracket server underscore VPN underscore IP right curly bracket colon 1027 minus M comment minus minus comment double quote SMO double quote pseudo IP tables minus I post routing minus T net minus BTCP minus minus D port 1027 Minus D dollar sign left curly bracket server underscore VPN underscore IP right curly bracket. Minus J masquerade. Minus M comment. Minus minus comment double quote SMO double quote. Pseudo IP tables. Minus I forward. Minus BTCP. Minus minus D port 1027. Minus D dollar sign left curly bracket server underscore VPN underscore IP right curly bracket. Minus M state, minus minus state new comma established, minus J accept, minus M comment, minus minus comment double quote SMO double quote. What this does, 1. Enable port forwarding on this system. 
to change the destination address from the PC to the VPN server. 3. Change the source address of the switch to that of the PC to get replies back. 4. Allow this specific port forwarding. SMO frequently asked questions. How do I control the mod? Main menu, CLNA, mod configuration. Pause menu, CLNA, or CLNA, mod configuration. In game, LNG D pad left, enable slash disable hide and seek. When hide and seek, D pad up, switch between hider and seeker. When hide and seek, as hider, D pad left, decrease hiding time. When hide and seek, as hider, D pad right, increase hiding time. When hide and seek, as hider, LNG D pad down, reset hiding time. When hide and seek, with gravity, LNG D pad right, toggle gravity camera. CR plus D pad up, open slash close debug menu. In debug menu, CR and D pad left, previous page. In debug menu, CR and D pad right, next page. In debug menu, CLNG D pad left, previous player. In debug menu, CLNG D pad right, next player. How do I change the server I'm connected to? By one of these methods, in the main or cause menu hold CLNG press A to enter the hidden options menu, where you can change server IP. You have to restart the game after saving the game. Newer versions of the mod will automatically save the game after changing the IP or port. Just wait a moment, until you gain the control back before quitting. In the V1.0.0 release version you'll need to manually save the game. Hold slash press CL while starting the game. This will prompt you for the IP. Might not work with older versions of the mod. Delete the common dot bin file in the save directory. Inside the usual Ryojinx emulator you can right click in the game to get to its save directory. In the switch this file is on the internal storage and not in the SD card, which makes it difficult to delete easily. You could use a save file backup app to export, modify and then restore the directory. Warning, don't use the reconnect feature under any circumstances. It will likely corrupt your connection to the current server, not connect to the new one, and possibly even crash your game. How do I act my Switch? You need an unpatched older revision of the Nintendo Switch, a micro SDXC card, a C connection cable, and a computer PC slash laptop slash smartphone, or a specific tailored injecting device. To make the RCM exploit safer and easier, it's advised to use a RCM jig. Follow this guide or alternatively slash additionally this one. The SD card should be formatted with FAT32 and not with XFAT. Because XFAT is known for having issues with the Nintendo Switch causing corrupted files and crashes. For the purpose of downgrading the game to version 1.0.0 and or to dump the game ROM to be used for emulators, make sure that you follow the guides regarding backing up the console keys using lockpick underscore RCM. Because you need to connect the Nintendo Switch to the internet to play online, make sure that you properly block Nintendo servers to not get banned. How do I obtain a SMO ROM for emulators? The only legal way to obtain a ROM is by dumping it from your hacked Nintendo Switch onto the SD card. The Use a Quickster Guide has a good section in how to do that. The short summary of it is that you download the latest NX Dump Tool. Please keep in mind that NX Dump Tool needs the console keys on the SD card in order to work and put it onto your SD card. If it isn't already there, some guides include it by default. You then run it on the Nintendo Switch from the homebrew menu in the title override mode. This means that you don't start the homebrew menu via the album, but instead you hold down R while launching any game. Dump game from inserted game card, dump game card content. Nintendo submission package and SP dump. Split output dump, that's pretty to support, yes. Start NSP dump process. Dump installed game, eShop, 
Dump installed SD card slash EMMC content. Select SMO, Nintendo Submission Package, NSB Dump. Dump Base Application, NSB. Split Output Dump, FAT32 Support, yes. Remove Console Specific Data, yes. Generate Ticket Less Dump, yes. Start NSB Dump Process. The resulting ROM will be located in the SD card inside slash switch slash NX dump tool slash NSB slash. Because the SMO game has a size of over 4 GB, the dump will be split into two files. In your computer, with a partition that isn't FAT32, you should merge the files together using the NX dump merger. Which emulator should I use? Ryojinx. Good. Accurate emulation that technically behaves more like a real switch, less bugs. Good, build an update process for the emulator itself. Bad, might run slightly worse on older hardware. Bad, additional network lag and therefore potential packet loss. Might already be fixed. Bad, requires SMO 1.0.0 ROM. Bad, requires a firmware dump. Bad. You have to manually create a new user profile and enable internet access. You do. Good. Might run slightly smoother on older hardware. Good. Easy to remove a patch to downgrade SMO to 1.0.0. Bad. Inaccurate emulation might cause graphical glitches and bugs. Bad. Using DNS host names instead of IPv4 addresses to connect to a SMO server doesn't work. Bad, you have to select a network adapter in the settings and might chose the wrong one. Or you need to switch between different adapters depending in which server you want to connect to. For example a VPN network adapter for a private server and another adapter for the internet connection to public servers. Bad, might not work on you slash Linux at all. Opinion, Ryojinx is the better emulator and you should try it out first. If it doesn't work or the performance is bad in your hardware, you can try out user to see if it helps or not. Am I on SMO version 1.0.0? When the game is downgraded using the Odyssey downgrade tool in the Nintendo Switch, the system and the main menu will show the game as being on version 1.3.0. This is correct, because technically that is still the installed version. A good indicator, if the game is really downgraded to 1.0.0 and is not running version 1.3.0 anymore is the playing in GR option in the main menu. When the option is visible that means that the downgrade didn't work correctly and the game is still on version 1.3.0. For emulators a real 1.0.0 ROM is needed, which can be dumped from the Nintendo Switch. Will the mod work for SMO version 1.3.0 in the future? No. It's too much effort to develop, test, build, release and support different versions of the mod. Also apparently version 1.3.0 is more difficult to mod than version 1.0.0 of the game. What is a public slash private IPv4 address? Too long, didn't read. When you're hosting a server, then Google what is my IP and give your public IP to other players requires port forwarding. In an emulator with the server running on the same PC, use 127.0.0.1, only valid in your PC. In a Nintendo Switch connecting to the server in your PC, use the private IP of your PC, only valid inside your network. Use 0.0.0.0 only in the settings point JSON. A public IPv4 address is the address under which a computer is accessible on the internet by other computers. Usually your router receives a public IPv4 address from your ISP. But be aware that there are internet subscriptions that don't give you a public IPv4 address but only an IPv6 address, for example LTE. Dual stack light. Private IPv4 addresses are usually only used inside your home network or for VPN networks and aren't publicly reachable from the internet. 
you can easily detect them by their leading numbers, 10.x.x.x, 172.16 to 31.x.x, and 192.168.x.x are all private addresses. Additionally 127.x.x.x is reserved for the local computer. You can input 127.0.0.1 as the server IP in the mod, if you are playing with an emulator in the same computer that runs the server. 0.0.0.0 usually stands for an invalid IPv4 address. It is only valid in context of hosting a server inside the settings point JSON file to denote listening to connections from all networks. In some systems it's a workable alias for 127.0.0.1, but you should avoid using it. Does this mod work with IPv6? No. The Nintendo Switch doesn't support IPv6 natively. As long as Nintendo doesn't change this, or there's a homebrew network stack that supports it, this will likely never change. How do I port forward? This depends on your specific router model. Usually you open the web interface of your router, log in there, and search for an option that let you configure port forwarding. Common router addresses are 192.168.0.1 192.168.1.1 If you can't figure it out, check the outside of your router. Usually there's a sticker on it, consult its manual, or check the default gateway of your network adapter. Once you found the settings, you want to configure port 1027, internal and external, protocol TCP. Additionally you also need to say to which computer inside your network the port shall be forwarded to. You want to forward the port to the computer that runs the server. Most routers will give you the option to select one of the currently connected devices. Or you have already selected it to reach the port forwarding settings. But sometimes you need to provide its private IP address manually. Something doesn't work, where do I get help? Make sure that you read all instructions on this website thoroughly before bothering other people. If you still can't figure it out or have problems, head over to the official Discord server. It's an active community of people that might be able and willing to help you in one of the help channels. The issues sections of the GitHub projects for the mod and the server are not for support, but for submitting actual bugs and feature requests. When submitting a bug, Make sure that you describe it in detail and that you provide log files and or crash reports, if available. Bye.